Benny, bring me everyone. What do you mean everyone? Everyone! I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. Harry Manilow know that you raid his wardrobe? Let me explain something to you. Um, I am not Mr. Lebowski. You're Mr. Lebowski. I'm the dude. No one is to stone anyone until I blow this whistle. You can't fight in here. This is the war room. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Lord, you can imagine where it goes from here. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the ZZ's Game Podcast. I am Joseph Buchanan, and joining me today is... Neil Coppin. That's right. I'm back. Yes, he's back. And also joining me is... Uh, Sasha Lowry. Okay, so um, straight off the bat, we're going to start talking about the news that... Uh, the best news of this week is Paramount inks a deal to turn more Hasbro toys into movie franchises. This is the news we've been waiting for all week. <laughs> um, in terms of... Um, of news, I could, as far as I'm concerned, everyone else should stop making films now. This is this is all we need. Um, <laughs> I have to say, I can't that wait. Your your ability to say this, keep a straight face, keep a level tone, <laughs> is just like remarkable. Doesn't quite cut it. Yeah, I know. I it's know. magical. It's 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 just <laughs> it's it's just so ridiculous that um. I can't wait till they release. The Connect Four Transformers crossover. <laughs> well, you know, it's like all you really need is what Optimus and Bumblebee, and it's just like the, the, the just play Connect Four, yellow and red. Yeah, yellow and red. Yeah, yellow and red. Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, well, well, oh, you know what? They could make a murder mystery out of Guess Who. <laughs> 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 like, with with Furbies <laughs> with Furbies no you know what you have, to, you have to have Optimus Prime just ask the question is it a man <laughs> <laughs> one of the Furbies <laughs> does he have a moustache <laughs> does he have a moustache is he bald yeah. is he green <laughs> um, oh wait for it wait for it you can have a Mr. Potato Head spin off yeah they have his own movie, CGI. Well, I mean, or, considering, or, like, you know, I yeah. think Disney sewed up, well, Disney and Pixar sewed up Mr. Potato Head quite nice. With yeah, I mean, like, it'd have to be CGI. I mean, like, yeah. but then I think Mousetrap would have potential. But technically, we've already seen the Mousetrap. Yeah, it's Ratatouille. In... No. No. I was going to say, in um, Boss Baby. Oh, yeah, yeah. Forgot that even existed. Yeah. <gasps> um, All right, what about, what about Hungry, Hi- Hungry, Hungry Hippos or Jenga? Hungry Hippos, but they got to make it a horror film. <laughs> and, like, people get kidnapped and locked inside those little tiny balls that the hippos eat. <laughs> and it's like, you know, it's like, you know, it's like the Hunger Games. Hippos are dangerous, though. <laughs> yeah. Hippos are super dangerous. It, it would have to be a horror film. That's what I'm saying. You make, it horror horror film. make it a horror film. I mean, they already did Trolls. <laughs> We'd like to play a game. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Make trolls. They do My yeah. Little Pony, no, no doubt. I mean, like, what else? We've got Nerve or Operation. <laughs> oh, God, you know what? I can, I can actually see them making an Operation film. Yeah? That could be just ER. Yeah. <laughs> the, the way it was supposed to be made. Um, but I think... You know what's really weird, though? This isn't exactly the worst idea that I've ever heard. I mean, cause, I mean if you think about it, we're in 2017. This is the same year that we had an emoji movie. Sure, but it's going to get worse. Do you know yeah. why? Do you know why? Because there's going to be a Tetris movie. There's going to be. I'd rather a Tetris gonna be, movie. There's going to be a trilogy. Than... How do you make a trilogy of Tetris movies? If they do, have it, you like... played Tetris? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, you can make that a trilogy. If they do it, if they do it, and like the how Black Twenty music. did their fake trailer for Tetris, because that was the greatest trailer I've ever seen. No, it wasn't. It was bad. It, it but... was bad, but it was great. If they did it like a B movie and not a two hundred million dollar movie, yeah. and did it like that with really rubbish special effects, <laughs> I'm in. Just so long as the humor is so ridiculous yeah. and awesome. And no, everyone's got to play it straight. Awesome. Everyone's got to play it straight, and like it, it's a no, real film. No. No, they're gonna play it straight. Like, do you know, like a naked gun? Yeah, yeah. Everyone's gonna play it straight. Everyone. Oh, yeah. There's got to be real. Billy, <laughs> you just got the freak jumped on top of him. <laughs> it's it's gonna be like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, 
super serious. Uh, but it's a comedy, but it's yeah, super yeah. serious. It's a comedy to us. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you know what? I mean, for a long time now, uh, I mean, obviously, when we're, we're talking more than just Transformers and G.I. Joe, mm-hmm. but for a very long time, well, I say a long time, a couple of years now, um, the comics industry has been used as the testing ground for films. Yeah. It's like, you know, the reason that oh it's like we got you know they they test out what a female for what the reception is to it they test out what a black captain america's reception is and what what's the reception of someone other than steve rogers being captain america what's the you know what's the possibility of someone other than bruce wayne being batman Mm -hmm. they test these things out and then depending on how well they're received they wind up in films Mm -hmm. and um i think they're basically just doing the same thing with hasbro because there's been a couple of comics where Hasbro's characters cross over. So we've had like a Transformers G.I. Joe crossover before. What is that sound? My ear speaker. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, I can hear that squeaking. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's like we've had that where it's like, you know, Transformers crossover with G.I. Joe or, mm. you know, something else that Hasbro has and it's just like they connect and they, they inter. inter Intertwine. Intertwine, thank you. Like, and, you know, I, I mean, if they did that, a uh, uh, G.I. Joe Transformers crossover movie, mm. I wouldn't be the first in line to watch it, but I'd watch it. I'd be there to watch it. But, I think right now, we've got so many, so we've got so many Bad, poor choices, not bad. Mm-hmm. We've got so many kind of uninspired choices being made in film mm-hmm. that what's one more? Yeah, I get. Oh, I don't know. Man. You can't get. You know what? When you hit rock bottom, <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah, yeah. The there's a picture of the rock. But when you hit rock bottom, the uh, only way is up. I don't know, man. Uh, Transformers has hit rock bottom for me. It, yeah, it hit rock bottom for me too. But at the same time, saying that it hit rock bottom, but. I say it simply, if we didn't have Batman and Robin, we'd have never got Batman Begins. Yeah, very true. Yeah. Right. I go with that analogy. But I don't I'm not sure if anyone's great enough enough with Transformers to do that. Or or G. I. Joe or Mask or any of those um things that they wanna make. Well, I mean the thing is, you know what? The, again, we're so used to uninspired choices in film that Sometimes things can just, you know, they can pull out mm. the hat and you're like, oh, this is going to be a horrible, horrible film. And it's like, you know what? That was actually quite, quite good. Mm. Yeah, well, okay. Well, well let's, let's see what the yeah. actual slate is before I, I slate them. Um, <laughs> so, but um, mm. yeah, that's that. That's uh, something to look forward to, guys. Mm. Um, mm. Um, going to another thing that is slightly closely related is Tyrese Gibson he is his feud with the rock is over um and we were talking about this earlier yeah. it's um um monetary issues in in a in one vein or another mm. um um because I, I first when this started I thought oh yeah the rocks in the uh, fast and furious franchise now he's clearly because he did the same thing with um uh, seven, I think it was. Yeah, he did it with uh, what's this guy's name? Oh, Vin Diesel. Yeah, Vin yeah, Diesel. Yeah, for WrestleMania. Yeah, and I thought, oh, okay, I thought it was going to tie into WrestleMania with him, with him having a match with um, Vin Diesel, but it didn't happen. But well, it, no, usually it's just it is the thing. I'm, I'm, as they don't know, I'm a big wrestling fan, yeah. and it is usually it's the thing of whenever there's an event within wrestling that is going to possibly lead into the same timeline as a film's release. Yeah. It's like you know, WrestleMania happens in April. Yeah. So, when a film release is coming out in April, it's like roughly March, April time. So, mm-hmm. whenever you've got WrestleMania, a big film coming out with a wrestling star in it, it's like, okay, we need to tie these two together because you're going to get the fans of <laughs> wrestling who mm-hmm. may not necessarily be first in line for a film. Mm-hmm. You're going to get them kind of 
juiced up a little to go and see the film, and then you're going to get people who wouldn't necessarily watch wrestling intrigued in watching yeah. just this little, you know, oh, it's like seeing Vin Diesel in a wrestling ring. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. You know, everyone's like, oh, well, wrestling's fake. So what? Mm-hmm. You know, like, but Vin, you know, it's the artistry or the, the kind of spectacle of wrestling mm-hmm. allows for you to have actors go there and then you know like have Snoop Dogg slap you know the big show and yeah, it's like yeah. oh my gosh oh wow this really happened yeah. and it's like no 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 it's like the big show like really let that happen but you know it's it's yeah, a perfect spectacle. it's a perfect spectacle mm. yeah um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cross um, uh, cross connection because you can have two different fans big fans of that yeah. same thing and so um, yeah that it does make for for good publicity in that mm. sense, um, uh, I won't go into what Tyrus is going through because he's already put on Instagram. Yeah. But um, um, it's not a it's not a position anyone wants to be in. No, it isn't. And, um, <laughs> it, uh, I, I do wish him well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Because uh, I again all this time I thought it was yeah, yeah, it's just a yeah, uh, publicity stunt. Yeah, yeah. And you found out it's not. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, well, okay, this is real. <laughs> um, and so. Yeah, um, I'm glad he has no beef anymore. I don't know when this story is, but um, this was... Um, well, it had to be this week, because... The 11th. Oh, no. Let's keep it against America. Oh, it was a couple of days ago, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, um, yeah, more power to him, I guess. Um, I hope he... Um, I'm, sh- I'm sure... I mean, the thing is, he can't complain too much, because he could. they just... If you, if you don't pipe down, we will place you <laughs> with, an, with another black guy. You know what? I, I think it's horrible to say, but when you think when you think of the Fast and Furious franchise... I don't think of Tyrese Gibson. You don't, but at the same time, if you think of like the positions that everyone has to be in... Yeah. So, you know, you have the, the, the straight-up leader of the group, Vin Diesel, mm. in the story. Um, Tyrese is the, the comedic effect. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't think you could actually... Re- you couldn't replace him, as in replace his character. You couldn't replace, oh, here's Don Cheadle as, as Roman Pierce. It wouldn't work. Mm-hmm. But you could essentially take him out yeah, and then put someone else in. Like, oh, here's a new character. But it it's... I mean, the whole thing, when it first started up, it was kind of weird to me because when he was... When it was... The whole speculation is that Tyrese is upset with The Rock because The Rock's getting his own Fast and Furious spin-off film. I mean, essentially, if you even if you go f- far enough back to say Fast and Furious Six, mm-hmm. the the back and forth comedy. Essentially, one half of it is Tyrese. It's Tyrese and The Rock. They're the the ones biting heads. You mm-hmm. know, it's like Tyrese is always talking and talking. His mouth never closes, and then he's just like, oh why do I smell baby oil and then the rocks walking in behind him you know it was like if you think of it in that vein I always kind of thought if they did a spin-off film and the rocks centerpiece to that film Mm -hmm. I think well you kind of have to have you know even in a in a a small role you'd have to put Tyrese in there Mm -hmm. but then when he was going mad and you know cussing and everything it was like well there goes that plan see I mean they could have easily spanned it off into a into a like a make belief feud like yeah okay yeah it was something but yeah we've turned it into a marketing yeah strategy and yeah well him him doing what he did on the Instagram didn't mm. help so but yeah anyway um if it's over it's over yeah. that's good for him um right Wonder Woman highest grossing um, superhero film um um ever or ever Apparently. Okay, but what do they classify as an origin? Because, I mean, Batman... Yeah, this is, uh, this is what I was going to ask you. Batman what, what, is an origin uh, film. What, Batman Begins <laughs> is an origin film. <laughs> and so this is... is I, I didn't even know they started doing stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, it's made a lot of money, um, no doubt, but um, I didn't know they started doing that. Uh, what, as in, like, um, uh, checking what is an origin film and how much money it made? Yeah. I uh, think... I mean, that's very specific. Yeah. I think yeah. it's just a thing of... When they say origin films, it's probably just the first film 
with that character in it right right, right and right. use that as the origin i mean because essentially you know tim burton's batman isn't really an origin film he's batman the first second you see him yeah yeah, yeah. so it's not an origin film but it's mm. the first cinematic batman film yeah and we show his origin in it yeah <laughs> um again yeah yeah, you know, yeah i, 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 I mean if it, like how, in 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 relation to other films in the list, how much money did it make? Okay, so it's this article says that um, I've, I've got the numbers in front of me. Okay, yeah, I had the number in front of me. Sorry. Yeah, because I mean they're like, mm. oh, it's the highest grossing Wonder Woman. Okay, so okay, so it made um, eight hundred twenty one and seven hundred and fifty mm. million. Okay, what's his closest competitor? I was about to bring the web slinger on his first debut. Because Spider-Man. that's the one. Alright. Okay. Yeah, made more than Spider Man. Okay. Okay, what? by about seven hundred and eight. Okay, is that million or thousand? Million. Okay. Yeah. Oh wow, okay. Oh no no no. It made it made seven hundred and eight. Hundred thousand more. Oh right, 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 right. Okay, okay. But I mean, it is. It's a stupid thing to to. Yeah. Like I think it's just. It's uh, horrible to say because like I'm not disrespecting anybody's filmmaking talents or I'm not disrespecting film. I actually enjoyed the film. Yeah, I enjoyed it. But as well. I think it's just. Um, you know, you're just kind of trying to pile on another victory like, yes like, yeah yeah the yeah. battle's over yeah. you've already won yeah it's sort of like it's like it's you know, like it's scraping like, yeah. the barrel there like to put to make it as relevant as it is i think the other reason for this new source is quite literally justice leagues around yeah. the corner yeah. Yeah. people people are at the moment they want to keep justice league in in people's minds and you got to understand if Wonder Woman's the biggest contender this year for them. Mm-hmm. They're going to scrape the barrel because they know they can't do that with Superman and Batman at this conjunction. <laughs> and I'll be quite honest, for them, for mm-hmm. Warner Brothers, good on them. I mean, like, you know, Wonder Woman was a very competent film. Uh, Justice League is around the corner. Mm-hmm. And if you look at all the marketing, it, they've made the switch. She's now first and uh, Forefront. Forefront, forefront in yeah. all of the trailers and stuff now. Whereas before she really wasn't. Yeah. She was just she was just there and like now it's just it's kind of like forget Batman. Wonder Woman's now leader of the Justice League in this yeah. <laughs> by the looks of the trailers. But I don't know, man. I'm I you know I know this is unrelated and this is back to Justice League. Mm-hmm. I was rewatching. Uh, I saw the trailer. The trailer that I liked. Trailer two. Okay. I love that trailer. That's the feeling that I want out of Justice League. Mm-hmm. Everything I wanted out of Justice League was confet- but and that was mainly down to the score. That mm-hmm. was mainly down to the musical choice that they picked. Not none of the rock music shit. None of the you know it was more you know classical wasn't music. And wasn't stuff. that rock music they used? No, no. It, it felt like, like a theme. Music. Music. Yeah, like it was theme, theme music. music they oh, used right, it. Right. And I don't know whether that's a Justice League theme or just that's something they just put in from the archives in yeah. there. But like whatever that tune was, it emoted the feeling that I wanted to feel and be hyped mm-hmm. to watch a superhero movie mm-hmm. and a Justice League movie at that. I mean, like I didn't even take notice about. Uh, I mean, I'm a big Momoa fan as it is, yeah, but. He didn't really become Aquaman for me until that trailer where he gets on the parody and yeah, it surfs him down. It and it's just the delivery as well with what was going on in the trailer. Yeah. He just looked so badass in that. And I was like, yeah, he's Aquaman. I want to see the fucking movie. Fuck Justice League. I want to see the Aquaman movie with him. Okay, because like, they managed to take like one of, one of my least favourite comic book characters and made him look fucking wicked. And like... I, I, what, you got to understand my fus- my personal frustration with DC films. I'm a comic book guy. I grew up... Look, I know I've been harsh on BVS, yeah, but I grew up as a kid in the 80s on a big staple of Christopher Reeve's Superman and Michael Keaton's Batman. And if they'd released a Justice League movie back in the 90s, I would have been first kid in that cinema opening day to see Michael Keaton and Chris Reeves together on screen. Kids don't know how lucky they have it now. We've got the Avengers, we've got Justice League coming. I mean, like, 
BVS was a huge misstep. I just hope they correct it. Okay, I really do. I, I, I'm wishing. I'm well, there's hoping. a whole other director on it. I, I know, but, <laughs> but I, 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 it's just, I don't want this movie to fail. I feel they've got the perfect villain. You know what I mean? To be honest, if the movie's good, yeah. it won't. It'll, yeah. Word of mouth will just, yeah, that's, hey, that's this just film's it. good. And but, that will be even better for it because it starts from a, a low plateau. Exactly. And it will just but, get better and better but, and better. Um, everything from the hype and the marketing for this movie has been hit and miss. Like, the first couple of trailers really didn't sell me. Really didn't. Because I, I don't think they know how yeah. to market it. And the last trailer, the last trailer I didn't like because it kind of went back to the rock music and it kind of lost, for me it lost the focus on what me personally, I know trailers are meant for the masses and stuff, hmm. but for me personally, that second trailer, I saw that when I went to see Thor Ragnarok this week and I saw Thor Ragnarok again. So um, they had that trailer playing and for once my theater had the fucking sound on properly <laughs> and um and man i was hyped i was hyped i was like yeah f fuck thor i want to watch justice league now mm -hmm. you know what i mean like like i i felt the buzz man and 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 they're scraping they're scraping at barrels here because they have to they're, mm -hmm. scra they're scraping at the bottom of the barrel here because they have to any any win for them is you know to get someone to buy a ticket to sit in the seat for justice league is the angle of this article mm -hmm. that that's all it is mm -hmm. and like i'm just praying that because there have been some screenings of it and you know no one's tweeted anything because they're saying Man, they're an, under embargo yeah there's an embargo now that could either go two ways you know what i mean no um, no if, I, if, I they, know. if they've if um i just just from the standpoint that um they've allowed people to see it yeah means that warner brothers are happy with the film and kind of maybe even confident with their product to a degree but we'll we'll have to see we'll actually have to see well that's the thing i mean it, i've got a few things to say on this the mm -hmm. first in regards to the wonder woman thing mm -hmm. it's in all right let, let's face it we're gonna put it down simply in regards to superhero franchise superhero films there's marvel and there's dc and that's mm -hmm. it Yes, there's a whole bunch of other superheroes and a whole bunch of other comic book films being made and being put. Films, TV shows, whatever, it's all Coke coming out. Coke and Pepsi out, of the industry. But that's it. It's Coke and Pepsi. Mm. That's all there is to it. Coke have released everything they're going to release. Mm -hmm. The only thing they have left to release is a trailer for, for well, Avengers. Uh, that's yeah. it, right? Pepsi, on the other hand, have their one final thing of the year left. Mm. And I kind of feel like it's it's unnecessary. Yeah, talking. Yeah, about it's, it. it's 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 not needed to to uh, throw out there to the to the film community. Yeah, well, guess what? Wonder Woman's the biggest origin movie ever. I'm like, yeah, but it's still not the most loved. I mean, I'm you know, I've been every time I've been on here, I've been defending DC. Yeah. And I still will defend DC. Like, you know, you were saying that like, you don't like. The, the whole kind of the rock music thing in yeah. trailers but I'm like but what Marvel movie doesn't use actual contemporary oh. music they all use contemporary oh, music no no that's not what it's, that's not that's no, not no, I, I know meant, I know you button. weren't throwing yeah, it out there right yeah. yeah but it's just like to say that you didn't you didn't like it and it didn't draw you in for the first trailer yeah I mean there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of films mm. that their use of music is questionable to certain people i mean anyone who's watched django you know the film is set you know two years before the civil war right towards the end of slavery well but they've got like rick ross music in the soundtrack and they have like yeah. tupac in the soundtrack and john legend in the soundtrack and it's like yeah but this isn't exactly the music but i think when it comes to music we give certain people passes and certain people we like we question them immediately about mm. it. Um, for me, I think it, the rock music thing is just a staple of comic book films. Now, of not even comic book, of just action. Anything that's an action film, they want that kind of hard hitting rock music in it. Even like going back to something as original as say the Raid, mm -hmm. right? The whole thing, the the reason 
I watched the Rage trailer is because it mentioned the music was done by um, Mike Shinoda. By Mike Shinoda. It was as soon as it, I was like, so Mike Shinoda, I was like, let's see this. Clicked, watched it, and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> you know, I completely forgot that he'd done the music mm -hmm. when I saw that trailer. So there's, when it comes to rock music, it's always the thing of like, you know, you throw in what works. I personally, I enjoyed that music in that first Justice League trailer that I think was the white stripes that they put used and was it I thought it was come together no no that was um, Beatles that was later on okay like at the very very beginning of the very first trailer oh the Comic Con one the no the very first trailer for Justice League that anyone saw I think it was Comic Con one mm. but the very first one the very beginning of the trailer yeah. where you see like the the um the box going into the ground and stuff they were using the white stripes and I was like ooh okay alright oh, you got my attention and I was like keep it going it's like the music is fitting in with the kind of tone of your film mm -hmm. so like I kind of when it comes to music I, I, I can just ignore it well, it's, it, because I mean it's like we've reached a, we've reached a, uh, a moment in time where the use of it's, it's sort of weird because there used to be a time when soundtracks were necessary mm -hmm. like the Men in Black soundtrack the Daredevil soundtrack, the Space Jam soundtrack. I feel I need to interject right? here because there, was, there, were, there were times when the soundtracks were, ne were needed. And I think we've kind of got to the point now where it's like, it's not really the soundtrack, but it's the soundtrack of the trailer is what is they're investing time and effort in. And I think as well, because of the fact that when you've got Iron Man 1 and it's so heavily ACDC, the whole Iron Man 2 soundtrack is ACDC. Yeah. It's just literally, it's just like an ACDC greatest hits album with <laughs> Iron Man and War Machine on the cover. Mm -hmm. So I think they kind of, they everyone's just kind of following that trend. Before you say something, right. um, I wanted to, because when the Thor Ragnarok trailer hit, I yeah. thought that was perfect. The Immigrant song, it was yeah. absolutely, it worked, for, especially yeah. Yeah. because of what character Hello was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, Worked. Yeah, it absolutely worked. Also, kind of worked yeah. with the tone of the movie that yeah. uh, Tiger Bottiti was trying to make because he was trying to do like a modern day Flash, Flash Gordon with Thor. Yeah. I never thought of Flash Gordon when I. I, I did when I, when I first saw it, man. I was like, rock music with Norse gods? Bring it. Yeah. Uh, it, I kinda, it, it didn't, uh, it didn't remind yeah. me of that, but. Yeah, but, cool. yeah, but I kind of think it's like. When it, I think maybe this is just my own personal thing, but when it comes to music with films, unless it's relevant like say when I say relevant I mean like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy the mm -hmm. music that's yeah. played is relevant mm -hmm. it's relevant to the a film. character yeah. unless it's like that where it's relevant the music really and truly is just like unless it's a song that I like or a song that I've, I have a connection with it just kind of goes over my head I just mm -hmm. ignore it yeah I, I, I do I do get that I mean I, I think with just having worked in <laughs> Uh, uh, if for a company that used to make trailers they, a lot of their choices were depicted by the producers hmm. so uh, you need something that's like this so they'll, they'll pick up a bunch of music yeah. that has a type of set that they want and they'll go actually no can we use this can we use this can we use this and then they get to one and then they'll stick with that and it's there's not a lot of there's, there's always lots of fingers in the pie trying to dictate what hmm you should or shouldn't use and um i think i think some of it's some of it's a stroke of genius some of it is that we've we've dictated yeah. that it should be this and i think um the justice league trailer i think there's a lot of pie of fingers in that pie as well to say because there was one thing that did that it did come to mind and it's it's weird what i'm gonna say and if I can explain it as best as I can, then cool. If I can't, oh well. <laughs> is that I feel like there's been an upswing in um, anticipation for Justice League, mm -hmm. and I feel that that upswing has come with the you know the departure of um, Zack Snyder ah, because he's had to right. step away from the project for right. those for those reasons. Yeah, I feel like because almost feels like it's gone in a new direction yeah it's like because Josh Sweden is, is so kind of like revered and he's such a, like you know he is the holy grail he is you know 
he is you know the the, the prodigal son mm-hmm. of these of bringing things to light in this way yeah he's kind of like he's given a free pass so it's like oh you know it's like oh justice league oh I really can't watch Justice League. And I was like, oh, excited to step away from the project and Joss Whedon's taking over. Oh, I can watch it now. I'm going to watch it now. I'm going to watch it now. I feel like that upswing has come out of that. That, that, that Whereas, upsets me. And it does upset that me. That upset me very greatly. And you can be upset it's, about it, but it I mean, yeah, it's not going to change other people's minds. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I think another thing is that I remember hearing about certain um, certain scenes to do with Justice League long before he'd stepped away from the project Mm -hmm. like you know it's in the trailer so it's not a spoiler you know the thing about where um, you know Batman does that thing on the roof where he always just disappears when like someone's speaking well they all do it and they leave just a flash there and he's like oh wow they really just disappeared and he was like that's rude (laughs) you know it's like it's great it's comedic effect and obviously it's come out in the trailers after Zack Snyder stepped away from the project Mm -hmm. But I know it was filmed when Zack Snyder was still helming the project. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if Justice League does well, a lot of people are just yeah. going to immediately credit it to Agreed. Joss Whedon. Agreed. They're going to be like, oh no. He was like, oh well, you, the second trailer that everyone loved, it's a Joss Whedon trailer. And it was like, right. this happened. And oh, it's Joss Whedon. It's Joss Whedon. And I was like, that's not how it works. Dude. You got to remember, Zack Snyder did so much of that project. And well, to be quite honest, when they talk about reshoots, yeah, they didn't they have that much to reshoot. Yeah, they did. They, it's it's literally it was already, more like a relay race. Yeah. Zack Snyder's run three quarters of that race, and he's just handed the baton to Joss Whedon to just get it over the line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To be quite honest, like mm-hmm. if it what look that would have been the job of like the second unit director. Yeah. Okay. On any other film, there are reshoots on every single film. That's just the norm. Yeah. You know what I mean? It wasn't. That it wasn't that the project was in danger mm-hmm. and stuff. They're still meeting the release date. Yeah. There was no hiatus. It was always part of the plan. Now, what wasn't part of the plan was the director, look, suffering you know, just, that tragedy. You know, suffering that tragedy and probably not taking the workload as much as him and his wife could. Now, Josh Whedon was just there. He's, yeah. he's not directing anything. He's over at Warner Brothers doing the fucking Batgirl film. Mm. So, do you know what I mean? It's like... Well, hey let's give it to him he's the Mm. Avengers guy it's a no brainer if you Mm. want to get people wanting to like Justice League or turn their attention because you're gonna you know the whole name of the game is to get asses in seats at this point you know what I mean they spin it and look at all the fanboys they're playing you cunts like a fucking pipe man sorry Mm. for the C word there but like I just felt the impact was necessary why is it you're the only one that ever swears I just am I kind of swore a lot sure but (laughs) anyway this guy from the get go (laughs) anyway it's just it's just you know what I mean like 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 you said I agree I agree with everything you just said there because Look, I love Zack Snyder as a filmmaker. Okay, he's made some questionable choices with uh, Sucker Punch, but at the same time, mm-hmm. it was a visual cut. It was all about the visuals in that film, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, but, you know, Watchmen, 300, I'm sorry, loved them. Dawn of the Dead, loved it. Um, you know, the, the Owl movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that was... that Night was of the Guardians. Yeah. Well. That was it. That they're really good, solid movies. Man of Steel, I felt, was a good attempt. It weren't my Superman, but mm-hmm. I did enjoy watching it. Man, the Smallville fight, I can watch that over and over. <laughs> it's like it. I I I enjoyed it. Yeah. BVS was a misstep. I don't solely blame him. I blame, I blame, I blame John Peters. And all those people that got their fingers in the pie in that one. You know what I mean? But I don't blame Schneider. You know, Justice League, you know what I mean? Like, you know, everyone, everyone's, ratting, you know, hating him over BVS. A little bit too much. And it just goes to a point. Uh, today I was asked by yourself, in fact, like when a great director makes a misstep kind of thing. Yeah. How do you feel about that? And my thing is it happens. Look, every uh, a famous filmmaker once said that every filmmaker has like I don't know like ten great movies in them, and definitely about thirty five real bad ones. Mm. You know what I mean? Well, and 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 mm. they you may as well just keep making your movies mm-hmm. because eventually you're going to get one of the ten. Yeah. 
You know, you know what it is? I think in regard in in that light, it's like um, if you take a film director, make make a film director a musician, make them like every film as an album. Yeah. When you do it like that, it's okay. So. Three hundred is a great album, and Watchmen's a great album, and then it's like Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch is a misunderstood album because <laughs> I like. The single, so if you if you look at the trailer and you say the trailer is the single, mm-hmm. the single didn't reflect the album. Mm-hmm. So it's review that it's like I'm, I I stand by it when I say if people watched Sucker Punch having never seen the trailer, half the people who hated it would immediately be like that was an interesting film I quite mm-hmm. liked it, and it's like, you know B BVS. For me, the album of BVS, I'm going to call it an album, not a film. The album of BVS is a great album. It's just got the two lead the two lead songs from the album you didn't like. Mm. Or the, you know, it was like, and it was like, you forgot how good the whole album was because you didn't like the Jesse Eisenberg song. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> right? You didn't like the Jesse Eisenberg song, so that was it. You didn't like the, the interlude or you didn't like the song Martha. So that made it bad. And I'm like, look, chill out. Just chill out. All right. The title didn't necessarily reflect the whole album, mm-hmm. but it's a good album. You're right. Okay. Yeah. Right? It's got two and misses, but yeah. Yeah, it's still a good album. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's, it's just that. It's like, and again, I will always stick by the fact that I say a lot of people's displeasure with DC Real, to me it comes a lot from their affection for Marvel mm-hmm. because Marvel came to you in this particular way mm-hmm. it gave you four like five films then it gave you a team up mm-hmm. DC you know it's DC's I said it's DC and Warner Brothers it's their own fault because they should have been on the gun they've had access to all of these characters for all this time they should have just stepped right on it but in saying that, it's, you know, it's like when somebody's showing you how to make the wheel, you can't make it better. <laughs> you know, you can't reinvent the wheel. Mm-hmm. All you can do is take the wheel and just like... Adapt put a, it. Yeah, adapt it or put a better car around it. Oh, you know, here's the wheel. It's made out of stone. All right, well, here's the wheel and it's made out of rubber. Mm-hmm. You know, that's all you can really do. So... Well, uh, I, I, I think... I, I don't I don't know what to make of all of this, but I mean, for the, generally, I, I there are times where I do feel that like the whole kind of displeasure at DC is more just it seems cool to dislike DC and like Marvel. In in film in relation to film, it just seems it seems cool to dislike one and like the other. I, I think again that course has changed because of Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. I think it that's tempered that that river. But I think the only reason it tempered that river, river, and I, and this is strange because I'm always here defending DC. I think the only reason it tempered the river is because it was a woman, because it was Wonder Woman. Right. Because I mean, I've I said it before the film came out. I said it when it first came. The first, you know, every time I've been here and we've spoken about DC and Marvel films, mm-hmm. I always said Wonder Woman was essentially a cross between Captain America one and Thor one. Right, right. And it was, it is. Mm -hmm. Everybody, they were like, oh my gosh, it's so powerful, so moving. It's this movie. And I'm like, it's Captain America with a woman. (laughs) You know, essentially, it really is. Down to the, down to the very last part of the film being set in present day. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Right, down to the very last part of the film, the last like five minutes being set in present day. It is you know it's like almost I'm not saying it's carbon copy but it's damn near the same thing Mm -hmm. you know it's and granted yes it's like obviously there are certain aspects that because it's a woman they immediately do become different as in you've got people who who always question what a woman's place in this world is what a woman's place is wherever the fuck she wants wherever she wants it to be <laughs> <That's> right <laughs> right <laughs> place is wherever she wants it to be mm-hmm. that's end of that story mm-hmm. but I feel that they gave her the leeway because she was a woman mm-hmm. 
that they wouldn't give to Captain America. But at the same time, Captain America came after a string of nothing but successful films. Mm-hmm. Wonder Woman didn't. Yeah. yeah. So you went into Wonder Woman expecting a bad film to to a degree mm-hmm. because it's like Man of Steel wasn't it wasn't a widespread success. Mm-hmm. BVS by no means was a widespread success. So you got to one, you know, Suicide Squad wasn't a widespread success. So you got to Wonder Woman with the anticipation. Well, these three films that came before weren't that great. Mm -hmm. So if this one isn't great, it's, you know, I, I, you know, I didn't expect Masterpiece. Right. So you saw it, you're like, oh, wow, wow, this was actually good. Mm -hmm. Captain America was a complete reverse. It came off the back of Iron Man, The Incredible Hulk. Iron Man 2 alright Iron Man 2 wasn't widely successful but it came off the back of these films with these now beloved characters Mm -hmm. and then there's Captain America which was a complete shift in tone Mm -hmm. you know you went from everything you see is present day modern mobile phones Starbucks you know uh, you know those funny kind of slick witty innuendos and all of that all of that came and it was like boom perfect this is exactly what 2008 and 2009 and 2010 and 2011 all fit in Mm -hmm. and then you know here's a film that's going to be set in the 1940s Mm -hmm. have at it yeah yeah I I, I see what you mean Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean starting from a basis especially with um, Mm -hmm. uh, Wonder Woman that's I th- it, one you can keep you can keep the film standalone yeah. from anything and two it it kind of introduces you to what type of character she was it mm. or is or progresses into yeah. because um, there's a almost like a baby on a new planet yeah it's like oh wow what's this this shiny oh you can't dress like this oh you can't yeah. put these clothes on okay cool it's it's that it's that whole um, fish out of water fish out of water uh, story which is uh, always good formula for so- one of those characters for mm-hmm. a type of character like herself um, I'm going to swing this along straight yeah. <laughs> straight into music again mm-hmm. um, but this is um, specific and uh, really good specific I think anyway okay. um, so Danny Elfman is um, um, what's the word uh, conducting the mm-hmm. orchestra for um, Justice League mm-hmm. and uh, he says that um, his original theme for Batman will be Batman's theme in the Justice League which, yeah um, yeah which is <laughs> um, what as which, in his 1989 yeah yeah okay and um, that that to me is gonna be sur- awesome but surreal in the sense that I've not heard it on anything Since. but that and um, I don't know. know what, I don't know what I don't know what happened with the um, the Val Kilmer ones. I don't know who composed that, but it sounded weird. Well, that was uh, Goldsmith. <laughs> really? Yeah, that was Goldsmith. It sounded weird. It it it, it almost sounded like the Batman theme, but it's like if <laughs> someone took drugs <laughs> and started trying to play it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, I I don't know. I I really didn't know what to to think of that thing, but. I mean, Joe Goldsmith had like a, a like a biggest uphill curve to to, to yeah. take. So uh, it, it didn't stick with me. Mm. I, I just remembered it being weird. Yeah. Um, and so I've always remembered the original. And um, what um, Hans Zimmer did with if they keep that theme in the Batman, bravo. That's all I got to say. What theme? If they keep the Eli if they Batman. keep that Batman theme in the Batman. Oh man! <laughs> um, um, yeah, so, what are you gonna say? I feel like part of me just immediately on here upon hearing that, I feel like it's a very, very, very tentative, very dangerous step. Mm. Ooh. Because, like, there's no one. Even with, the, even if you like, you 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 think of the liberties that they took with the film. Mm-hmm. There's no one I know who's going to turn around and say that the 89 Batman isn't a classic. Mm -hmm. By taking something which is solely connected with a classic and then throwing it into something which is already, you know, 
you know, let, let's face it, like, sports-wise, it's already on a yellow card. <laughs> you know, the match, hasn't, the match hasn't begun and it's already on a yellow card. Yeah. You know, it could it could drop something bad. Because if, if, say, for instance, if people don't like Justice League, mm-hmm. the, the 89 Batman theme isn't going to save it. It could do. <laughs> no, I, 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 because all it's gonna be is it's gonna be like you'll be watching it, and then if you don't like something that Batman does, or you don't like Batman in it, you're gonna be like, yeah, you've ruined the theme for me because you're bullshit in it, and you're not, you're not Keaton, you're not <laughs> Keaton's Batman. How dare you use this theme? <laughs> You That's know what? what you're there gonna is, kind of feel. There is there is one person. In, there's a few guys in the universe that probably feel that way. You know what yeah. I say? Go suck your own dick. Seriously, I want Keaton's Batman theme. And that look, this is <laughs> the best news I've heard. This punishment week. for opinion. Yeah, yeah, it is because those people are wrong. <laughs> but you have to remember, it's like you know, uh, uh, fanboys. Fanboys are a, a horrid branch. They are. We'll, they are. We are. We are. We are. We'll lose. We are. We'll lose our shit from the most minute, tiny little thing. Yeah. Well, well I don't share your sentiments. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, if it's, if it's something that I mean, if it was a different composer, yeah, saying yeah. this, I would say, oof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you sure you want to do that? <laughs> um, uh, but because it's Danny Elfman. Yeah. So I care about this shit. I'm going to use it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, so, it's I like, can't. I can't tell. I honestly can't go up to him. Hey, man. I don't think you should. That thing you wrote twenty years ago. Maybe you shouldn't use it. But I'm going to dictate to you what to. I, like, and I think it's more of a Josh Whedon thing. It's not even that. It's not even that. It's like I, I think it's. I think. I think it's a combination of it of everything I mean like look if you were Danny Elfman mm-hmm. and like you get told yeah you have to write the Batman theme and he's just like oh, I wrote the Batman theme mm-hmm. what you want me to write another Batman theme I think that's how where he you, was coming from how do you how do you top that I put everything into that's that. like John Williams yeah. you rewrite your own Superman theme yeah 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 Yeah, I'm not going to do that yeah exactly <laughs> so how do you do that he would like and rewrite it and like okay he just comes in and gives play. you yeah yeah <laughs> They'd be like, but you didn't rewrite it. I'd be like, yes, I did. Look at look at the title. The title's brand new. It says <laughs> Superman theme in brackets. <laughs> Twenty seventeen. Boom. Yeah. It's rewritten. It's all new. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, but again, it has an extra said, trumpet. Yeah, we can, <laughs> but like like you were saying, I, I think it's a balance between Josh Whedon wanting to bring a nostalgic element. Yeah. And um, Danny Elfman being that nostalgic element who wrote the original um, he wrote theme the, for Batman. The theme for the most beloved Batman, yeah. period. So. so, I mean, it's, again, as I was saying when I was explaining all the themes, um, mm. Hans Zimmer and James Newton Howard, mm. um, they, they both wrote a, a theme for a film that set, well, that, that for Christopher Nolan, mm-hmm. fitted that, his world, his world, and so um, coming off of that, because I, I still feel that they could have come off that Dark Knight series and introduced Superman, right there. No, 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 just hear me out. Just hear me out with this. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. So I have the they, face of death on me. That's why. <laughs> so um, if the the way they introduced uh, Superman and Man of Steel. Like he's, yeah, he's been on the planet for however X and amount of years, yeah. and um, because there was no fantasy or flying aliens in anything to do with the Batman. Dark Knight series, um, they could have backdoored the Man of Steel from the Dark Knight. Batman hasn't been around for years. This being comes, you see that whole part of Ben Affleck, freaking hell, he's away with um, Catwoman. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get what you mean. And the, the, whoa, what the hell's this? I need to come back as Batman, and him just—that's if you know. Yeah, they could have done that. I'm <laughs> more than happy they didn't. I know, I know. Yeah. But if if you if you wanted to connect that universe, yeah, and we're in a logical sense, that's how I would have backdoored it from mm. Dark Knight to Man of Steel. Well, it does. It makes perfect sense because it's like Batman essentially retires at the end of of uh, the Dark Knight Rises. Mm. So, and he retires a young man who's only been Batman essentially, what, two Ooh, years? Two years. It's, 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 it's two, years, two years, right? He's only yeah, been Batman right. two years. And he steps out, you know, 
and then this otherworldly being arrives and boom he's back mm -hmm. I get it I do I, I get it I'm glad that they didn't simply because on reflection the Dark Knight trilogy is not as good as as it's it's hyped up to be for me for me personally it's not and I only say that because simply I've said it many a times I like my comic book I like my comic book characters and my comic book films mm -hmm. to be fantastical you're, you're fantastical by nature you know <laughs> so far we have not had aliens you know mm -hmm. arrive on this planet and then become superheroes mm -hmm. you know the closest we got to that was maybe Michael Jordan well you know Whoa. It, 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 you know uh, like, <laughs> right? you, you look back. Wow. You, look, you look back at some of them games. And you be like, "Hey, you're not from this planet." Mm. But it's the thing of. I don't. I don't really want a comic book film that's grounded in reality. Okay. Yeah, I see what you mean. Because it's just like to me, it is. It's just kind of pointless when you ground a superhero film, a film about someone who's gonna dress up in a costume. Mm -hmm. You know eight times out of ten with a cape <laughs> and a mask yeah. sometimes brightly coloured mm -hmm. it's it's the the dumbest idea ever but we want it grounded in reality you know screw reality mm -hmm. you know Frank Miller said it best he said I don't want to see Superman with sweat patches under his arms I want to see him fly yeah, yeah so yeah. taking going immediately away from Nolan's whole like oh here's the reality and you know it's like this is what would happen you'd have this car and you know you'd, you'd, you'd have to have a tank for the Batmobile no I don't need to be a tank look man make the thing a Lamborghini with a, with a freaking chain gun on top of it <laughs> but a boom you know oh you know but it has to be able to go over buildings look man watch the Fast and Furious films they can go over buildings they can fly <laughs> right it's just you know, embrace the silliness of what you're doing. Don't go, you know, don't go too far, you know. Don't, like, as I say, don't go full retard. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't want to see, like, <laughs> we don't want to see Joel Schumacher handling stuff again. Mm -hmm. But, you know, look at the, look at the, um, the Tim Burton ones. Mm -hmm. It's, it's madness, but it's perfect. I love it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like I, I want that. So when I saw when I on reflection watching it, and I'm like, any Batman that after two years, or not even two years, because you think he was basically Batman, a ye yeah, he was basically Batman for two years, and then retired, mm -hmm. and then like was just in the worst physical condition of anything like. There's NFL players who played their entire careers who were in better shape than Bruce Wayne was in mm -hmm. Dark Knight Rises. And I'm really just like, nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> You're not Batman. <laughs> You're not even close to Batman. Well, I mean, it, it, again, I think, as, as you were saying, that's the, the world Nolan created for him. Um, well, not Nolan, but Goya uh, and his um, brother. But, um... um I, I do know what you mean by yeah. that it's it's and I'm glad they didn't connect the films either yeah. to be honest because you can watch those films stand alone and enjoy them for what they are yeah. and then watch this new inter interpretation mm -hmm. of him and just okay you go with it for where it's going it was yeah. taking you um, again going back to the sco scoring of this mm -hmm. I mean it was all uh, it was also uh, rumoured that um, he would have uh, Superman's theme there but he said he was going to have both the themes and I don't know how he'd do that, but um, he said he's going to do something sinister with John Williams' thing, and um, um, and probably have um, um, Zimmer's thing that he did uh, for this new interpretation yeah. of. You Batman. know what he's probably going to do? He's probably going to have like Zimmer's script theme whenever like Lois Lane is like remembering him, like a flashback kind of thing, or whatnot, like. Oh, you're talking trailer. about Batman? Okay. The, no, Superman. No, Superman. Theme. Like the stuff in the trailer. John Williams' Superman theme. John Williams. Like, oh, yeah, right. like Zimmer's Superman theme for those moments. 
And then probably, you know what? I reckon John Williams one will happen. Because if you think about it, you got Steppenwolf, mm. his whole fucking army, and all you're getting from this trailers is those guys, okay? Those guys. I'm sorry, there's only one man that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Steppenwolf, and that is Soups. So I reckon it's quite literally, I'm predicting the whole film now. This is how I'd do it. They all go for it, this fucking never-ending battle mm. to try and attempt to take down the big bad. They all get whooped like the Turtles versus the Shredder and like Splinter at the end, Superman just appears to John Williams' fanfare and beats the shit out of Stephen Wolf. The end. <laughs> That's too James Bond for my life. That's going to happen, man. Nah, it won't. Do you know why I think it probably won't happen? <laughs> why? Because if they do that, and there are two main reasons. One, they're not a team. <laughs> it's well, like it's, it's like Transformers. Yeah. We're the Autobots. Optimus Prime is out of the picture for a while because because Whatever because reason. he's so powerful. He would just end it in one motion. Yeah, but I'm just like no. Because the thing is, if they do that, yeah. then you you weaken. Yeah. The you you weaken basically any reason for anyone other than Superman being present yeah. like who's gonna really gonna wanna go and see a Flash film when you know that it's like all Flash and shit compared to Superman yeah. who's gonna wanna go and see the Batman film when it's just like oh it's like, why don't you just call Superman <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. yeah yeah that's true and on top of that when you think about it, Wonder Woman is their their golden egg right now. Oh yeah, true. So it's like they ain't okay, making she... her they ain't making her look weak at all. She is probably gonna be the one. She's probably gonna like have a little one on one with Stephen Wolf, and then he's gonna be like the end of the fight. He'll be walking away, and he'll be like spitting out teeth, and like <laughs> he'll be like, you know, I'm gonna go tell my mum on you, you know, with a big bruise on his eye. But, send out send out the communications you know, to Darkseid yeah. for the sequel. <laughs> Well, um, in any case, we'll find out in the next uh, few weeks or so. Um, how Twelve the days. Music was, uh, yeah, there you go. Um, a week and a half. So, um, yeah, let's see what happens with that. Um, okay, um, before we talk about that, let's talk about The Lion King. Um, so this film's been cast now. If anyone doesn't know, they've, um, they're making a live action, anime, sorry, they're making an animated version of The Lion King. In the, the vein of Jungle Book. Yes, it's all CG, so it's animated. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, but it's, it's live action slash animated. Mm. Um, and uh, you've got the cast list in front of you, have you? Yeah. Okay, so uh, we start off with Donald Glover. We've got Beyonce uh, as Simba. Uh, Beyonce Knowles. Carter, oh, oh, she's taking up the last name. Mm -hmm. um, as Nyla. Uh, James L. Jones, I don't know who he could be. Me neither. Chiwetel Ejiofor as Scar. That's an interesting choice. That's a brilliant choice. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I can't remember pronounce her name. Elf, Elf, uh, Elfrey Wood, Woodard mm. as um, Sariba. Mm, Sarabi. Sarabi, even, sorry. Uh, John Oliver as Zazu, which is perfect. Um, John uh, John Canny as... Uh, Rafiki. 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 The monkey's the baboon. The king has returned. Oh <laughs> right right okay yeah that's that's, that's right. Um, Seth Rogen as uh, Pumba. Pumba. Well, yeah, do I you think that's a good choice? Yeah, I, I do. could see that. I could I could see it. It's strange. I feel like it's a good choice when you think of what Seth Rogen looks like and you think. Of what <laughs> like. I'm not I'm not disrespecting, but I like if you if you want a character to kind of seem to remind you of the character they're playing, then it's like Seth Rogen fits Pumba perfectly. But I kind of feel like at the same time, when I listen to the sound of his voice, mm -hmm. he could actually play Timon. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that with how Timon sounds. Yeah. Because the way Stop Timon sounds... Timon, sa Timon has a very distinct mm -hmm. voice. You know what I mean? Yeah, like it's, it could... Like, yeah. Do you know, like... I could almost see, like, Danny McBride being Pumba. Yeah. At, with okay. Seth Rogen being Timon. Okay. I, I could see, yeah. I could totally see where yeah. you go with that. Okay, I haven't, I haven't seen the film in years, so I'm I'm having Pumble trouble connecting the warhog. Yeah, yeah, but I'm still having. Do you know when you, I, I've got like a very yeah weird interpretation in my head about what that lo looks like and sounds like and mm, maybe, well, I forget, maybe not. Nathan Lane is Timon. 
in the, the actual in the original. I don't. I, I didn't even actually know who the original voices were for the original. Matthew Broderick was Grown Simba. No way. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's strange. Like, like I think I'm gonna pause for a second. Like, let you continue like reading off the cast list. Oh, okay. Um. Okay. So we'll continue. We've got Billy uh, Billy Ekno, uh, Ekno, mm. um as uh, Timon. Mm. Um, Eric Andre as Azazi, hmm. uh, Florence Kasumba as Shinzi. Shinzi. Who's Shinzi? The uh, Whoopi the Goldberg's Whoopi character. Goldberg. She's a hyena. hyena. Ah, why didn't they just get Whoopi Goldberg? Yeah, I know, movie? right? Well, this is what I was gonna say. Like, why I wanted you to finish the casting. Um, okay, so Keegan Michael Key uh, from Key and Peele as uh, Kamara. Uh, DJ, I don't know who this guy is. Uh, JD. DJ McCur- uh, JD. JD McCurry as Young Simba, and. Uh, Shiade, Shiade, uh, Shiade, right? Joseph, uh, as young Dyla. Mm. Yeah, now, I mean, what I wanted to say in regards to the cast is a very inspired cast, mm-hmm. but there's a couple of things that kind of got me, which were the majority of the cast, to my knowledge, is still alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, from the original. So I was kind of like feeling like, why not just get the original cast? Yeah, it's not like the Jungle Book where a lot of those casts were not around anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, in saying that, I kind of understand because to a degree, it's like, all right, you know, you want to up, you want to beef it up a bit, you want to update it. Yeah, and I mean, like, not being, not was... being insensitive, mm-hmm. but I feel like what they've done is. It's a very black cast. Oh yeah, that's done purposely because right. it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's an yeah, African yeah. tale. It's an African tale. So I even know it's like based on a Japanese cartoon. Oh yeah, like, yeah. We ain't, gonna, I, we ain't even, gonna get into that. Let's not even go there. But it's like, that's deep. You know, it's like Lion King is a lie. But <laughs> it's you know, you know, it's a, it's a very black cast. I feel like, to be honest, I feel almost like, like all right, right now I'm looking at the image of the cast reveal, and I can't see. The, the, the line I can't see where it says the Lion King and oh, I'm looking at the, no 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 no, no. Oh, I, want okay. it, I want it gone for a reason right so I can't see that it says the Lion King and I'm looking at that and it looks like it's the second half of the cast for Black Panther <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it might as well be the second half of the cast so well, you got you know well I think Black Panther is unique in the sense that if you're going to you're gonna see a lot of these the, these characters' faces in Black Panther, so they have to be the they gotta be black. The, yeah, kind of black. It's yeah, but can't do uh, blackface anymore. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, I'm, I love it. But I think the thing for me, the reason why I'm like saying that is because if you like, I remember the cast somewhat well, and I'm like Matthew Broderick was, you know, Ferris Bueller was grown symbol. Oh yeah, and then you know James Earl Jones, yes, he was Mufasa, so end the story there. Jeremy Irons was um, Scar. Scar, right? Whoopi Goldberg was Shinzi. Like Nathan Lane was um, Timon. I can't remember who played Pumba. But, you know, it was like you had certain people doing these roles. Mm-hmm. But I think it's almost like, even though the majority of the cast, I mean, like, they, they've taken virtually unknowns for young Simba, young Nala, I think that's that's an inspired decision. Mm. But at the same time, I think it's just like, they just made this cast, even though everyone in it is is talented, and I can't stress that enough, I think they just made it as a, pol- as a political, it's a political statement. statement. And I mean, the one thing that I really just, I don't know why it's not sitting well with me, is Beyonce as Nala. I think it's more because she'll be able to do a good uh, singing part. But here's the thing: <laughs> I remember, very, I remember the original Lion King very well. Nala doesn't sing. She'll definitely sing in this one. <laughs> yeah, she's got to you. now. She's got to because even if you think about it, the only time when she should have sung was you know when it's um her and, and she Simba she meet does. as a she does sing. In what? In Lion King. Other than other than her little small part in in um, I just want to be king. Oh, I can't wait to be can, king. Can you feel the love tonight? She's not singing. That's she Elton does, John. She does. No, that's Elton John. No, it's, but, it's El. No, it's not her. It's Elton John. Is it? It's okay. Elton John. That's it. That's what I oh, mean. Oh yeah, no, no, no. You're right. That would have been yeah. her part. Is her yeah. and Simba singing? Can you feel the love tonight? Yeah. But it's not. It's Elton John 
belting out them vocals, right? And it's like, you you see that moment and you're just like, yeah, Sim, now Simba's the king, mm-hmm. right? But it's, you know, so now I can imagine that they're going to alter it and shift things around to make it, make use of her voice. Mm-hmm. That said, when I think about what Nala sounds like in the original, mm-hmm. yeah. the actress's voice sounds very much like it's 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 almost inch perfect for Beyonce Mm -hmm. but I just I feel like they chose Beyonce because she's Beyonce not because she's got the perfect voice for it I mean if if you're going to market the film you can market the film on her alone yeah well that's it I mean you can't really market the voice on more more what's that Moira Kelly who was the original voice yeah you know what I mean like Mm -hmm. She's a voice actress. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I mean, my man, like, in, my my casual movie guy won't be talking about that as a selling point. You put Beyonce Knowles in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everyone's like, oh yeah, Beyonce's in this. That's ideally why they've done it. And Donald yeah. Glover's in Stoles now, so yeah, people so don't know who he is. People, well, people know. By the time it comes, everyone out. knows. People know who he is, knows, but he's yeah. he's still not. Oh yeah, yeah. But he's, as soon as Star Wars he's, he's, he's gonna be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. even yeah. more. Everyone's gonna be like, "Hey, on, childish Gambino." You know, you know what I mean? Like, uh, oh, he's not that no more. No, uh, yeah, he's tired. He's, yeah. he's, he's tied uh, that whole persona, he, didn't he? Hung yeah. out, man. But I mean, um, you know what? I I like the cast. Mm. I would have preferred to have kept like some of the originals. Like, you know who like I would have kept? Rowan Atkinson. Yeah, yeah. As Zazu. To be to be quite oh, honest, yeah. I would have kept Rowan Atkinson as Zazu because mm-hmm. I've I've seen the Lion King recently, mm-hmm. uh, recently kind of thing, and Zazu's very disti- distinctively Rowan fucking Atkinson. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, John, I think John I'm, Oliver has that same yeah, kind of temperament. I, 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 don't get me wrong. I'm sure he'll be very good. Mm-hmm. It's just I'm gonna have that part of me that would just be like, no. oh, I wish it was Rowan Atkinson. Yeah. But I'm same gonna, thing I, goes mm-hmm. for uh, Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah, like okay, Shenzi is Gold- just yeah. You know, it's just like that moment. It's just like, I mean, it's not even just Shenzi. It was who is the original uh, Az- Azizi? Who? The one of the other original um, hyenas. Who was the original? Yeah. Um, the original. I don't know. What hyenas? Yeah, I think of the three hyenas, right? Yeah, there's Ed. Yeah, not Ed, because Ed was just like a giggling yeah. all the time. Anzi, Cheech Marin. Right, there we go. Yeah, That's Cheech true. Marin. Oh, now, geez. when you look at that, Cheech Marin, Whoopi Goldberg, and it's just like, even I remember the scene clearly when they first catch young Simba, young yeah. Carla and Zazi, and it's just like, oh, what do we got here? I don't know. What do you think, Shenzi? <laughs> it's like, I don't know. You know, and it's just like, oh, hey, Ed? 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 You know, he was like, did we order this food to go? No. <laughs> Why? Because there it goes. <laughs> it's like it was, there were some lines that it's just like it's Cheech Martin, mm-hmm. it's Whoopi Goldberg, and okay, you've replaced them and you've replaced them with with outstanding uh, actors, mm-hmm. but I'm just like yeah. them old heads. Like we're old heads now, and you know we 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 remember Lion King in the cinema, so we're old heads. And when we watch this new one, as good as it may be, it's gonna be like oh. But I just remember, you know, I remember Cheech and Whoopi just holding it down. Mm. It's almost you no know way. It's almost like being a fan of a sports team and having like particular players having particular positions mm-hmm. and now you've got new players taking those positions and you're just like I don't know how I feel about that <laughs> we'll have to see I'm sure it's going to be okay oh I have I have yeah. no doubt it's going to be a great film I personally I actually I'm going to say it now I think it's going to get nominated for an Oscar probably I, I, I hold it down definitely to visual it. effects wise yeah right yeah, it's going to get nominated for an Oscar but um, who's directing this it's John Favreau. Favreau oh yeah probably then. big boy yeah. mm. Probably well, that's just it. They loved what he did with Jungle Book 2. He's doing Jungle Book 2 and this simultaneously because um, he's got his own studio mm. and it's the same pe- same people at ILM doing it. Mm. So, yeah, uh, they're just doing these talking animal flicks, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know what? I'm really interested to see the what the trailer looked like at D23 because that's a lot of people were talking about it because mm. the trailer the mm. teaser trailer is just the intro you know the original trailer yeah. the, it's just the first two minutes of yeah. the actual movie literally but done I kind of feel like yeah. that's a bad idea 
No. No. That's no, good. as a trailer. No, because oh. I'm like, that's that's how you started the film. Yeah. Right, Everybody right, right. knows that of the film. But that was you actually know, that was actually the original teaser trailer for The Lion King when it came out way back when. I remember watching Aladdin and they had that. You had the sunset, you had the deer and the buffalo look up mm-hmm. and then they all go into the thing and then mm-hmm. Rafiki comes out as a child. You know what I mean? That was that was the Lion King. Yeah. And I think that's the perfect trailer because people are gonna watch it, people are gonna get nostalgic, yeah. and people are gonna be like, Holy shit, it's like it's live action, what what is this? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And people are gonna go watch it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just based on that. You don't even have to show story details, you just gotta show that opening mm. in. Yeah. You can take all my Disney money. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Because that's literally, that's all they have to do because that's the original, like I said, that's the original teaser for the original movie. Yeah. That'd be fan, and, and they've already done it at T23 because um, I remember them reporting it saying, mm-hmm. oh my God, it's <laughs> stunningly amazing mm-hmm. kind of thing. They've recreated that, but like, you know, more or less CGI live action kind of, kind of thing. So, you know, if I saw that, uh, I'm already there. That I'm more fascinated to yeah. watch because there's no human interaction. Yeah, exactly. And so that's that's going to be yeah. No, no, no. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So, um, if going from a uh, one animation studio uh, to um, another, another kind of animated classic thing. Um, or main anime. Uh, so it looks like um, anime a classic if you were a teenager at the right time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right, actually. Um, ah, yeah, yeah. Is that is that what you? Ah, oh, okay, okay. Well, I haven't said anything yet, but um, um, so it looks like uh, there's a Lord of the Rings TV show in development. We don't talk TV much on this, but um, I think this is relevant enough to. Uh, see what the film fans feel about this um first of all would you recast Gandalf <laughs> well here's yes. the thing it's a it says it's a Lord of the Rings TV show Sol Meridian though but I'm like Sol Meridian it's definitely Sol Meridian you reckon yeah I mean that's uh, well the, do they have the rights to it because yeah they do they, they finally could, got the rights yeah because they wanted to make those into films yeah I said well you would have to make like films forever to to tell that story apparently mm-hmm. so um, I think a TV show yeah. would be better. But um, yeah, what do you make of? Is it a reboot or is it a they continuation? They haven't. They've just said that a TV show is under just development. a TV show. Well, my thing is this: if it's if it's a continuation, then more forum. Go go ahead. Do your thing, because that's going to make all the monies. Yeah, it's it's you know. That world is so rich, it's so vibrant, it's so heavily detailed that you could, you know, like you need something now that Game of Thrones has got like one season left. Mm-hmm. So and it's about the right, it's about the right, right, yeah. right time for Lord of the Rings season. I mean, like it is literally like ten years ago we were just gearing up on the Hobbit trilogy mm. at the start of the decade. Yeah. By the time this comes out, it'll be two thousand, two thousand. What it's two thousand. 17 now so yeah. you know I mean it'll be coming around the right time I mean um, yeah um, it depends what it is it depends what it is mm-hmm. if it's a continuation if it is the Silmarillion mm-hmm. then that's going to be like one of the biggest things on television mm-hmm. to be fair if it's a reboot it's still it's going to have all the controversy that reboots have and yeah. um, you well, know I mean if it's on TV I don't think it will I don't think it will have the same gravitas as it as the films do because yeah. the films are the films. The TV yeah. series will always be the TV show. Yeah. Um, um, in doing, the, I mean, Amazon looks like Amazon Amazon Studios are doing it. Um, so it won't. I don't think it will have. Okay, so um, I don't if if the uh, if Warner Brothers are smart, they'll set in the same world. Yeah. But not if, necessarily be the same story. Might yeah. not have the same characters. It yeah. might be like a different fellowship of individuals trying to do something. Yeah. 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 So if if that's where they're going with it, that's cool. But I think if it's something akin to the Soul Marillion, then mm. um, 
they could they could they could milk that for years. Oh yeah. They they could they could go on for years doing well, that. That's if they invest the right amount of money into it because mm. things like that, I mean, let's face it, look, you know, Game of Thrones, as much as everyone loves it, it ain't cheap. Oh yeah, yeah, it it's ain't definitely cheap not cheap. To make. So I saw the visual effects stuff for the well, last one that's well, woof, you know, and it's like even when you look at it and you think some of the things that should cost a lot of money Mm. don't cost as much as other things like mm. it costs more to animate the wolf than it does to animate the dragon yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> right but it's it's just straight up I think if they invest the right amount of time and the right amount of money into it yeah. and they do it in the right way and for me the right way is it's just a continuation on even if you set it a hundred years after the actual Lord of the Rings the trilogy of films that we know it as and it's new characters even if you go beyond the uh, Mm -hmm. Silmarillion even if you just you have your own original story and you deal with it in your own original way cool go ahead you know have it that the 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 films that we know and love exist Mm -hmm. this is what happens after because if you try and do something that runs concurrently with the Lord of the Rings it fails Mm-hmm. if you try and reboot it it fails because you know prior to Lord of the Rings it was Star Wars and done mm-hmm. Lord of the Rings came in and it opened it kicked the door off the hinges for what epic fantasy franchises can be yeah no Lord of the Rings no Game of Thrones mm-hmm. but and you try and reboot that you're never going to recreate that same magic, especially on television, and you're just going to sully the wars of the memory of the films. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like, yeah, that's, yeah, you're, you're very right. Yeah. Um, that, I mean, either way, mm-hmm. um, I mean, it could be... There's a, manner, there's a whole manner of things I could do. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't want to see them recast Gandalf, because as mm-hmm. far as I'm concerned, Gandalf, Gandalf is... Um, it's Ian McGowan, yeah. that's it. And... Um, even when he came back to it, yeah, oh it's... yeah, he's, he fit the shoes fit. Mm. Yeah, and um, I can't, I just can't see it unless they get Sean Connery. <laughs> uh, I don't um, understand this rubbish. <laughs> Go back to my golf. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I, I look forward to it with bated breath and uh, mm. see what see that turns into. Um, but yeah, yeah. Watch this space. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, what we were going to talk about um, before I really interrupted you. Oh, no, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Um, so, Taika Waititi, he's, um, he's expressed interest in directing an Akira adaptation. And um, his adaptation on Akira is the best one I've heard anyone talk about because he said he's not, don't change the country, don't change the um, cast, the cast, keep a oriental cast, but just good actors, um, yeah. just um, get actors that are up oh, and coming. Oh, which there are a plethora. Yeah. It, and so, um, the, the, the th- yeah, I, f- I think that's the thing to do. Just don't, don't, tr- don't try and Americanize it. Just, it's, it's, it's a Japanese story, mm. set it in Japan. But I mean, if they have to talk or speak English, fair enough. I, 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 can, I think I can accept that yeah. to a degree. If you're trying to, if you're trying to sell a, a movie like mm. this, you have to have an exception because if you have this one in Japanese, then you're ina- uh, um, uh, alienating like 70% of your audience. So yeah, um, yeah I, I, again, what he was saying was um, interesting what you say. Uh, talking about the future things, rumor has it that you would be interested in doing a cure. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. We've been talking to them a little bit. Um, I don't know if it's sort of early days. Really, I'm just kind of entertaining the conversation between. Uh, he's a huge fan of the property, long time for a long time. Um, I always felt like it was something that could do with a unique take, but I don't believe the world needs a remake of the anime. I think, for me, it would be. Um, if the if any real possibility for doing it, I would really just want to look at the adaptations of the books or the comics, um, or the um, the graphic novels, and so um, yeah. Again, um, yeah, he's, he goes on to say, yeah, actually, uh, Asian teenagers would 
be the way to do this for me and probably not um not like no no big names any sort of unfo unfounded untapped talent yeah probably want to take it a bit back towards more the books yeah so yeah he's all for homegrown or all natural um homegrown talent so um uh, in just the way I know his mind works, I think he could make because people think of him in one dimension. I think he'd be able to do this quite easily, to be honest. Mm. Just looking at the scope of what he did with four, and um, he he's got artistic narrative to to because I mean the world of. The world of Akira, and in, in, in accordance to the anime, mm. it, it looks very much like 2019 mm. is going to be <laughs> anyway. In the sense that there's lots of civil unrest going on. Mm -hmm. um, we've got gnarly yeah. uh, bikes and youth versus age. Yeah, it's it's. I'm getting some feedback. What is that? What is that? What is that? I think that might have been me. I think I got a message just now. No, it's not you. Ooh. I don't know where that's coming from. Oh, there's a car on outside. Oh, it's a car, okay. Sorry about that, folks. Um, <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, uh, what was I saying? You were saying about his view and his... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think he has an artistic narrative to to be able to build that world, mm -hmm. um, keep it that land. He just coming coming off four. I think he'll be able to demand anything he wants. Essentially, I don't think he'll get it. He probably won't. But he's the only one this far that's had a, uh, well, the most gra grounding yeah. idea to yeah. Just don't take it. Don't make it New New York. Yeah, don't make it. It's Neo Tokyo. It's, it's Japan. It's <coughs> yeah, not. it's Japan. I think okay for me. I think the issues <coughs> are that one. I don't think Hollywood is. I don't think Hollywood would be ready to push that. I don't think Hollywood would be able to pull the trigger on that. Mm. I don't think they're ready for that, and I don't think the. Hollywood invested bread upon audience would immediately accept that. I think fans of Akira, whether it be the anime or the comics, would immediately accept that. Fans of anime would immediately accept that. Mm -hmm. The widespread Joe Blog would not accept that. Mm -hmm. They'll be like, you know, they're going to want to see, oh, it's because, and you think about it, it's young. It's teenagers, right? Mm -hmm. Young teenagers up until like early twenties. That is the core base of of your main characters. Yeah. The problem with that is it's immediately it's culturally too different in terms of is that is that what you were going for? Well, yeah. I mean, it's like if you look at what um, even if you just go to like if you go to Japan or you just look up what Japanese teenagers are like. Mm -hmm versus American teenagers it's, it's yeah it's, it's night and day <laughs> it is night and day it's not it's not even to say apples and oranges it's mm -hmm. like it's like watermelon and fried and, and freaking fried fish it's mm -hmm. other side of the galaxy and I think to do it because I can imagine that they're going to be like right what group of young actors like I can imagine if they if they were filming Akira like within the next five years like I guarantee you, one or two, one or two of the of the kids from Stranger Things is popping up in there. You know, you might get I don't know, uh, either Selena Gomez or Ariana Grande or something mm. like that. They're gonna they're gonna be like nitpicking their 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 bright best and brightest of their their of their like young crop of actors and throwing them in there, mm -hmm. as opposed to being like no we'll set it in Japan we're going to go to Japan mm -hmm. that said I mean look at uh, Ghost in the Shell where is Ghost in the Shell set <laughs> the live action film it's 
I, I believe it is Japan, but it's, exactly, it's, it's not set in. It's not set in Los Angeles. It's not set in New York. They set it in Japan. They yeah. don't explicitly tell you it's Japan. Yeah, and that's they were very careful. Right? Of that. They're uh, very careful not to tell you where it's it's set, mm-hmm. but it's just it's set somewhere in the future. Yeah, they would do that with Akira. They wouldn't tell you it's Neo Japan or Neo mm-hmm. Tokyo. Mm-hmm. Um, when he was saying about oh he'd want to adapt it from the comics mm-hmm. not from the anime f- anime because they cut a lot of, out of the comics to, but to make from the what anime. I remember I mean I'm probably remembering it wrong mm-hmm. but from what I remember a lot of it is quite similar until the end, end. yeah and it's basically the end of the anime mm-hmm. is like the end of book one yeah. and there's like three books yeah 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 so it's like everything that happens beyond that mm-hmm. is what he's he's talking about bringing in. Mm-hmm. The problem with that is one key thing I do remember is there's quite a bit of rape in yeah the, um, even, even in, in, in the, the anime. Well, right. yeah, it, it's, well, it, it, it suggests. Touched, it suggests. Yeah, but I remember in the comic there is a, a substantial amount of it, mm-hmm. and like not we're not even going to get onto it, but in like. To, in the present climate oh yes I yes. don't think anything to do with rape is going to be anywhere near the screen mm-hmm. so yeah that's, that's interesting I feel actually. like I feel like his his vision and what's going through his mind and what he might want is perfectly suited for, for the artistic vision that I want directors to have I want filmmakers to have but You've got to remember, you know. Yeah. He's he's in he's in a business minded environment, mm-hmm. not a creative, artistic, creative yeah. minded environment. I I th- I think what Warner's want to do is to re- ideally to release this film in 2019 when the original is set. Yeah. And that that's just that, that's an advertising stamp on its own. Um, well, automatically, that's um, it's just to me. Yeah, it is an advertising time, but it's a silly advertising. Oh yeah, it is because the world uh, technologically is not where it is in Akira. I don't. If, and you, if, if you, I mean, <laughs> I, I would say, well, yeah, go, go, go. I, I know what you mean. It's like it's like well, technology doesn't play exactly a big part in Akira, but it's what I mean is um, things work. When things are set in a particular year, mm. they work because we're not in that year. Yes, yeah, yeah. Especially when it's science fiction. Yeah, when science fiction works, even if it's dystopian, mm-hmm. even if you, you look at like Escape from New York, that's set in 1997, mm-hmm. you know, I can't remember where <laughs> Escape from LA is set. But LA? Yeah. Yeah, it's set in LA. No, when, when year. Oh, when? when oh, it's right. Set. Um, yeah. No. Because ninety is, I know that Escape from New York is saying nineteen ninety seven, yeah. and I remember, I remember it was so silly because I was actually I was in high school at the time, yeah. but I remember when nineteen ninety seven was rolling around and it was right after I'd watched, I'd watched like Escape from New York in like ninety six, mm-hmm. so when it was coming up to ninety seven, I was like, oh shit, is this really gonna happen? Is New York gonna turn into a prison? Is this really gonna happen? <laughs> I was, I was like, it literally like I had maybe a whole like a whole night of just freaking out, mm-hmm. thinking. Is this really going to happen? Is New York going to turn into like a, a prison that people get sent to, you know, for anything? And I was just like, oh man! And then it was like nineteen ninety seven here, and I always remember it being like New Year's Eve, and I thought the second it hits ninety seven, they're going to just announce New York's a prison. And it was like, <laughs> ding, nineteen ninety seven, and it was like everything was fine, and I was just like. Man, that was a stupid thought. I'm glad I kept it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's a, that's one of those thoughts. Your imagination runs with you when you're a yeah. kid, man. And it was and like that's... even even beyond that, like, you know, I liked skateboarding as a kid, mm. and I was thinking, like, oh man, I can't wait for 2015. I'm gonna have a whole board. <laughs> and you know what? It's it's crazy because I have a hoverboard. Yeah, it don't hover. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. But. You know, that's one thing I did have, but it's just like thinking 2013. about... 2013. It's set in 2013, yeah, alright. So, so the date's passed. Yeah. <laughs> but it's things like when you think of certain films and you're like, man, 
I thought the future was going to be that. I kind of wish the future was going to be that. Like mm. things like Star Trek will last forever. Yeah. Because for the most part, they keep like when you think of like when Kirk is set, and then you think of when Picard is set, mm-hmm. and then you think of everything beyond that. Mm-hmm. We still haven't really caught up to all of that yet. Yeah, very true. So you kind of feel, kind of feel at peace, kind of feel at ease. And but, and, and, but, but just, the, the reason why, I, I'm, it may, and again, maybe they'll just, they'll just time jump it yeah. and just put it in 20, 2029 or something. Yeah. But um, the the world that um, Akira, it's, I'm I'm always going for the anime because that's what I viewed yeah. more. It it just the closer I get to two thousand nineteen, oh, that's kind of the same. Mm. <laughs> it's you're it's just looking at it and you're just like, mm. wow, yeah, that's actually happening. Uh, that's happening in Venezuela. That's happening. Oh, uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, it's definitely yeah, happening. We're it. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, all, the only thing that we need is those those laser packs that they have, oh, yeah. <laughs> which I'm sh- I'm sure there is so- something somewhere that has those um those laser cannon things that you mm. you see on the um. Uh, the front cover of the, of the video or mm. uh, DVD, um, but um, um, this is what that's why I was mm, yeah yeah they could get away. Mm. that that future isn't so futuristic that it's unbelievable to yeah. believe oh they've got this device that you hold in your hand and it does this and this and this A yeah. B and C yeah uh, that's not believable in 2019 actually they they they, they they're very careful in that anime to not use phones Phones. or anything that has uh, anything that that can be dated yes and that's what I really loved about it It, it's Mm. it's very much the same in um, Blade Runner to a degree as well Um, uh, they I mean there's a phone used three times in Mm -hmm. the original Um, and it's a picture phone which is kind of yeah yeah FaceTime where we are right now yeah FaceTime yeah so um, um, and so when it when it comes to that back end of oh, it's back end, I say back end, but um, that um, part of it, I think mm. you can kind of get away with um, making still making that film and have it be relevant. But um, again, we're getting Battle Angel, yeah. Battle Angel Elia, yeah. Uh, when whenever they decide to release that, mm. um, I still haven't seen the trailer. I want to see a trailer for it. I, I want to know what this film looks like, and so. Um, it's, I mean, there's not been many uh, anime adaptations, bar um, uh, or manga adaptations. Uh, what was the one with Tom Cruise? Edge oh, of Tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Um, see, a lot of people don't know that's based on a, a manga. So, um, but it's completely that's because it's so completely different to the manga. Yeah, I guess it would be, uh, and they even changed the name, which yeah. I don't know. The that name, it was. I mean, I'm going to go see. All you need is kill. That's a I. I can understand why marketing would go, <gasps> can't have a kill in the title. Yeah, why you not? can. Kill, kill. <laughs> View to a kill. A time to kill. View to a kill. Uh, mm. there's, there's lots of, but... It's, it's <laughs> kill <like>, Gunter. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't know that why was that would they completely read, no, you can't have that in it. Let's call it something like um, The Day The Sun Came Up. Yeah, that's a bad title. <laughs> no, um, but I think... Well, someone someone you know just really wanted to make... So it could be just one of those things where someone just really wanted to put their stamp on the movie to say, I made this, I came up with the title. You get people like that. Yeah, but to have it... I mean, you know what? I didn't mind Edge of Tomorrow. I didn't think it was like the worst trailer, the worst it's, title I've ever heard of. It sounds like but, an 80s film. I know, but I love the eighties, so I gave it a little blight. But what sure. what gets me like is what gets me is now mm. that the the sequel is called was it Kill, live, die, live die, die repeat repeat, repeat. and repeat yeah, and I'm like, you could have just called it. All you need is kill. Yeah, <laughs> That's, that would be the per- that would be the perfect sequel uh, name for it. Mm. It's just the sequel to Edge of Tomorrow. That's all you had to do. That's all you had to do, and um, but. Right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're, we're getting that from regardless. Yeah. But yeah, um, that's it for that. Um, there's a couple of other things I want to talk about. Let's have a few honourable mentions. Tintin. Uh, um, would you have Andy Serkis direct one of these? Yes. Um, do you think a sequel will ever happen? Uh, yeah, when Peter Jackson can be bothered. So never. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, he ain't doing anything now. I know. I, I I've wondered what is with that. To be quite honest, because I've been waiting for Tintin since The Hobbit. 
Okay, because that was supposed to be the thing he was doing right after The Hobbit. Mm. And he, man's just ghosted. Peter Jackson has ghosted. Yeah, maybe maybe because he got the George Lucas treatment with The Hobbit. So screw you guys, I ain't doing nothing. I'm going to make my own films in my basement. Well, he was supposed <laughs> to direct a Doctor Who episode, and he like didn't. <laughs> mm, well, and there was hype about that as well. They mm. went as far as like fucking shooting a promo for it. I was like, what the hell happened there? I'm not the biggest Doctor Who fan, but like, you know, like, come on, man. What what was the last film he did? Don't say it was The Hobbit. I think it was The Hobbit. Yeah, it was the Five Armies. The, five, the five Armies. Yeah. Was that the last one? Of five Armies. Yeah. 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 I've not seen that one yet. I, I still want to see it. It's not this so much. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I yeah, hate I those films. <laughs> I like their consistency, though. Yeah, that's one thing. Yeah. They do, they do. I, 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 I don't know. I just felt that they could have been cut down a lot. You're talking about Peter Jackson here. Oh, no, I was talking about <laughs> the first movie there, bro. It's like well, that first I mean, movie was long. True, but... There was a lot of juggling going on at the start as well. I don't know. I like that first movie. Uh, yeah. I sat through all of them and I have, like, you know, I, I, like have, the the extended, I have the extended cuts of them. I like the, I like the yeah. second movie. Mm-hmm. I, I still don't know what it had to do with the fucking book because all of it was made up. Yeah. Sure, why not? Like, the whole movie. Well, that's because you sure, can't, you know what it is? It's because of the fact that... Because the book's that big? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what it is? It's because you got to think about it. Like, they cut out so much stuff from The Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. And it still wound up being three films that were freaking like almost, really long, like yeah. you know three hours in in cinema running time. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, even with the extended cuts, like you know, the first one's three and a half hours. This lot, the the second and the third are almost four hours long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's some long ass films. Yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day you got to think when you have an almost four hour length film and you still cut things out and you still had to trim the fat down a bit mm-hmm. you can't you can't add that up and be like oh, I'm, I'm going to make this and it's going to be one film there's one book so it's going to be one film no 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 <laughs> people mm-hmm. that have people now have an expectation of it yeah 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 that's very true well we're still credited for doing Prisoners of the Sun which is the second King Tint sorry second Tintin movie producer nice. um, yeah. but you know there's just been no just been nothing maybe he's just mm-hmm. taking a break because he's mm-hmm. sick and tired of like the, the middle earth thing because mm-hmm. the thing was he didn't want to do it as three movies it was supposed to be two and then like New Line were like yeah we, we need the third movie even better Guillermo del Toro is supposed to direct that film you know what if he had directed it I would have loved it no, you don't know that you I would have loved you, it no you could have hated it. it well do you know what I'll be honest like I watched a lot of the making of yeah. the first Hobbit film and they talk about the fact how you know Guillermo stepping away from it and Peter Jackson then taking over mm-hmm. and Guillermo del Toro still served as producer and they still had long lengthy discussions mm-hmm. about you know uh, about design about artist artwork about how things looked how things seemed and all they really did was alter certain outlooks the, the uh, appearance of certain things to make it more Peter Jackson-esque and less right. yeah. Guillermo. Guillermo del Toro-esque like the orcs, the orcs had a, the a orcs, slight the redesign yeah. more, the, biggest, the biggest redesign of all was Smog because mm. um, his, his version mm. was that Smog was going to be the biggest animatronic ever created on film mm. and I was actually kind of looking forward to that I'm not gonna lie. I was really looking forward to that. I don't know. That's super expensive. That is super expensive. But I, you know, I I like animatronics when mm. done well, and he's a guy that does them very very well. Okay. And I I just think it just would have been very interesting to see that aesthetic on. Mm-hmm. on it would have been film. a good spectacle, but um, if if the well, yeah. budget outstrips what, hey man, this is not necessary. We could I could do without a computer yeah. and get the same result. Um, I mean it's yeah. It's, I would love to have, give someone the artistic narrative but if you're working for a studio like Warner's yeah, yeah that's true yeah keep keep your yeah. paycheck down baby <laughs> um, mm. and to for to build something like that you need you need guys that know what they're doing with, with mm. com- if you're building something inside of a computer you need at least um, maybe 20-30 people to do that and 
it's there's no uh, there's no materials involved it's just yeah in a computer so i mean i don't know i i, I don't know what to get from it because if if i can't compare it to anything that i've seen mm -hmm. Um, that is on that scale, apart from the Jurassic Park dinosaur, yeah. where they yeah. used part CG, part animatronic. And so, I mean, even in the Jurassic Park 3, they built the whole Spinosaurus mm -hmm. as a front half, and yeah. which looked really good. Um, but when it needed to be CG, CG worked. I mean, they used the same principle as the first film. But, um, I mean, that's not smog. <laughs> so, um, yeah, who knows? Who knows, man? I can't. Even, I can't even pronounce his name for me. Small, Smog. small. But um, yeah. Anyway, uh, Tintin. Um, I don't know where that's. I've been. My French friend uh, Marlene. I've mm -hmm. told her to watch this film. She's she's very reluctant to watch it because it's so Tintin's so ingrained in yeah. French heritage. I don't know. I don't know. Did you like this film? Did you like work? I don't think I like it. Mm -hmm. That's a really bad impression of her. But um. <laughs> Um, I've told I've, I said that you will enjoy it because yeah. it in it keeps to the core values of what Tintin is. It does. You know it what? does, and it was a very good film, but it strays. It strays very far from the source material. That's the thing, and it depends how how embedded in the source material that she is to that particular Tintin adventure. Mm -hmm. And I've I've got them all. I, I've actually got all the Tintin comics. Mm -hmm. And my brother bought the DVD of the classic animated show. Right. And animated show follows all of these stuff to the T to what the comic book is. So if you've seen the TV show, mm -hmm. and if you know it back to front, then you know what the movie is. My brother actually hates this film, believe it or not. He actually, that doesn't surprise me. He doesn't like it because he's just like, oh, but they changed this, they changed that. And like, he doesn't really watch films in general. Yeah. He, he's more an anime guy, you know what I mean? And he likes comics as well, but he's he just, you know, he just doesn't understand why sometimes they change it and stuff. I thought Tintin was good for an audience that have never seen Tintin before in their lives. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was a good introduction to the characters. But, um, but um, yeah, liberties were taken on Spielberg's behalf and you know some of it worked some of it well actually no you know what I thought it was a very good adaptation but I totally understand why a Tintin fan would pro uh, a hardcore Tintin fan would be like eh, I don't know about this mm -hmm. especially if they're from places like France Belgium uh, Germany and all of that that where those comic books originate from yeah you know what I mean because they grew up with it a lot more hardcore than we did because that was their bread and butter. That was their Mickey Mouse. So, you know what I mean? IPs like that and Valerium, you know what I mean? They, you know what I mean? Those guys would know it more than we would. And they'd be, you know, um, they'd be like with a fine tooth. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I'd never recommend it to them. I'd just be like, okay, cool. Like, I thought it was good. No, I think she, she, she can't. The reason why I recommend it to her is because I said, judge it once you've watched it. I, yeah. I think you'll like it because it's a well-made film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, that is. Judge it on that merit uh, as opposed to on your... But, I mean, she will judge it on what she grew up yeah. with. Yeah. But it's a, still a good film. So I have to say judge it because I, I'm i telling you, the director who directed this is a good director and, see. and so forth. Now, I... Other than knowing the character existed, I knew nothing of Tintin until I saw this film. Okay. Oh, really? I didn't pay attention to any comics or any animated shows or anything. You never watched animated shows? Tintin just wasn't my thing. Oh, my God, right? man. Tintin Like, the closest what? I got to Tintin was I enjoyed, like, Johnny Quest and stuff, so I was not <laughs> Tintin I, wasn't my guy. I had one I right? had one qualm. Mm -hmm. I wanted the old-school theme tune in, but, yeah. you know, John yeah. Williams did his thing, innit? Yeah, so, but that's the thing. That's <laughs> like, I had no kind of... I wasn't invested in Tintin at all other than knowing the character existed. So when I saw it... I enjoyed it. I thought, you know what? This is exactly what a family film is supposed to be like. Yeah. It's there are times where there was just this long kind of like almost one shot, just one tracking shot, just following Tintin for ages. And it was all this stuff happening. And I was just like, this is actually quite really good. This is like proper family entertainment. Mm -hmm. And watching it and I enjoyed it. And like I said, I just thought it was good family entertainment um, it did have a very much Spielberg feel to it and it did have a you could tell where it was like it was like it. there's a car and Spielberg's got one hand on the wheel and Peter Jackson's got the other hand on the wheel and they're both just 
you know, perfectly co-piloting each other, just doing it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, cool, it's great. If they say they want Andy Serkis to do it, well, fine. Andy Serkis did a lot of the, I think it was the first AD or second AD on like the last couple of Hobbit films. Right. So yeah. he knows his way around camera work. He obviously knows his way around um, the whole kind of motion the capture motion world. Capture, yeah. So I'm like, go ahead, why not? It's it. To me personally, it's not gonna affect the film. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't affect my viewing of the film mm -hmm. if Andy Serkis directed it mm -hmm. I think you, you'd I think generally you have to be a invested film fan mm -hmm. for your opinion of the film to change based on whether or not Peter Jackson's doing it Steven Spielberg's doing it Andy Serkis is doing it you'd have to be really invested in film right. for that to happen like if you're just invested in Tintin you ain't gonna care yeah yeah so I don't know, that's, that's my two two pence in yeah, I, I, it's, I guess in in some ways that um, it's kind of a hard sell because Americans don't know what it is and there's a whole generation of uh, people around the world that don't know what, uh, it, yeah, is. Don't know what it is. Uh, I, I mean, on launch of this film, I think more people are privy to it, but mm -hmm. still in a, it's in a, not in the same place Valerian's in, but um, it just it's, um, oh yeah, I've heard of Tintin. In 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 that, people are, I'd say, more on the Western side that are yeah. reluctant to explore it because it's uh, not really my thing, or it's too different. Or if you put if you slap Jaws in it and and say Captain Haddock was in it, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I don't know because he uh, because he um, there was a part where it just reminded me of um, uh, do you know that part in Jaws when they're talking about the um, oh, what's his name. The guy, the guy that has the ship. Quinn. Quinn, yeah. yeah. When he was talking about the ship going down. and he was Oh, when he was ship. on the SS and he was... The the actual, the real ship that he... Yes, well, that's right, ship yeah. that really existed. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. So, when he was talking uh, about... Indianapolis, was it? I think it was the Indianapolis, yeah. yeah. And um, there's a part in Tintin mm -hmm. where he was kind of going through this... He's, this oh, delusion. is it when he's on the boat and he's drunk? Yes, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. So, I thought, yeah, just slap... Even this picture right here, slap jaws on it. He's mm -hmm. put his pointer finger out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they need a bigger boat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they needed a bigger boat, and they got it. Jaws too. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, you could easily do that. Anyway, um, um, hopefully, um, Andy Circus will do something with this after he, after he's done um, his um, his version of the Jungle Book. Or um, is he in the Jungle Book? Oh no no, he's doing he his, was own. Doing his own. No version. no, they're still doing it. Oh, they still doing it. Still doing it. It comes out next year, I believe. And um, they're calling. They've re-titled um, it. Okay. It's um, a story of the Jungle Book or something like that. Um, they've been very careful, and the title's actually pretty good. Uh, but yeah, you you'll find it on the internet somewhere. Okay. Well, okay. Um, well, I is mean, it like, bad that I'm, I'm just like. I mean, like the... because it's not because it's not. You gotta understand the Disney Jungle Book one was very synonymous with the. Disney version of the mm. movie what, what a lot of people don't realise is that the actual Jungle Book is a combination of different stories set in yeah. the jungle you know what I mean that um, Roger Kipling yeah there we go wrote so there's plenty of scope to have a very different movie under a different director a different studio you know what I mean mm. to be able to do the Jungle Book so I mean there's been many different films about the Jungle Book yeah you know they've come and gone in the past so we'll see we'll see mm. <laughs> uh, well, before we go, there's one more thing. Uh, so Gwyneth Paltrow, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, um, Halloween costume oh, yeah. was her head in a box. <laughs> no, because was it her partner who dressed up like Kevin Spacey? Ooh. No, like like Kevin Spacey's character. Like, yeah, 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 so oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I guess before all of that happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was actually. It was yeah. literally before all of that happened. Um, Wow, what a, what a time to do that um, trick or treat joke. Um, but anyway, um, that's the end of the podcast. Um, we've gone an hour and forty minutes longer than I wanted to. But um, uh, thank you, Neil, for coming back. Always um, a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Uh, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, shoot for moon pictures, pics. You can find me on Twitter, shoot for moon pics. Probably better to go for me on on Twitter because like. My Instagram's private and it ain't gonna become unprivate anytime soon. <laughs> you heard it here, folks, first, folks. 
Um, and uh, Satchland Productions, where can we find you? You can find me on Satchman3 on Twitter. And you can check out my, my short films on YouTube at Sasha Alari. And you can find this uh, podcast on YouTube, SoundCloud, Stitcher Radio, and iTunes. Just put in Zito's Gang and you will find it. Uh, or hashtag Zito's Gang. And you will definitely find it. Or you'll find something uh, equivalent to that. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, share, like, subscribe, um, whatever however you're listening to it because that would help me out tremendously <laughs> um and uh yeah that's it we'll see you again next week folks um this has been the zedo's gang podcast and we're out